after you. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Used to squeeze in there. You can see where they needed little fellows. The guns are right beside. Yes. Wow. I've quite often looked at those, and we've had discussions about how how small you had to be to get, and how did you get in there? Yeah. Well, on the ground we got my pilot in one. He was six feet two. It took us ages to get out. He was well straight and he used lots of bad language. I bet he did too. <laughs> My recollection was of the guns being longer. Oh, I'm sure they would be, Dad. But this is just you know, a short barrel. I'm yeah. sure your recollection would be accurate because actually when you see the photographs of them, they're yeah. longer. So I'd say that that's just a, a temporary setup. Yeah. Yeah. And that's what caught fire the time that your plane was on fire? Yeah, well, that, that's when the tail end was on fire. The engine was on fire as well. So that's a number two engine. Yeah. Gosh. More oxygen bottles, I remember them being here. And we're standing right where your turret is this, to lower this from. This is where the turret... Well, the, the, without, the, without, without this without room. That, yes. yes that's, and above the turret, those boxes, I assume they're ammunition boxes, are they? Yes, they would be. Well, that's, it may not be much further down there. That's the engine that was the new, and you can see the, where the pilot had a problem because you could see where the wheels retracted into the wing. Yes, and this and is the engine that was on that fire. Was the engine that was on fire, but he was also very, very bothered that the shells might have punctured yeah. the landing wheel, and yeah. that would have really made a problem. Yeah. Oh, 21 squadron. There's another ball turret. Yes. Or yes. another piece of a ball turret. Yes. So, so these that were your those, controls? They, they were the controls and the triggers. Right. So let me get oriented. So you're, you'd be looking out that well, I'd hole. Be, I, this would be the door. Yep. And I'd be laying like, about like this. Right. With the, those about like that and looking down right you can see you can see careful the, of the oil yeah. that's oil not yeah. water the seat which would be hmm. let me think i'd be laying on this so the yeah. seat would be somewhere up here yeah. so i could see down between my legs yep and those two things that I assume are heel stirrups, are they? That's where your feet would those be. Those where your feet were. They yeah. had um, uh, special gun sights which you operated with your feet uh, that were supposed to set to the wingspan of attacking aircraft. Right. Uh, so that you press these and when, when the sight closed in properly you right. were on yeah. target. Right. So your feet operated that? They were feet foot operated. Oh, right. Yes, the Sperry gun sight. 
the communication set up. You, you spoke through a, a throat mic. Right. And uh, your voice had to be good. Yes. To, to, be, to be clear through. When well. we were really in trouble that time, my, my nothing worked. I, no. I couldn't even communicate with no. them. And you couldn't get out of your turret if they didn't pull you up. If they didn't wind you up and undo the door, you were locked in there. I was, I was, they were putting a fire out yeah, yeah. at the time. Yeah. And I couldn't get, get out because I couldn't manoeuvre my turret. What had happened, oh, you'd lost the hydraulics or whatever, that, no, or no, electrics. What, that what, what, what had really happened was, in the fire, they had thrown stuff and they had thrown a... Um, uh, a parachute on uh, that got caught up in all the clog. Oh, okay. Things. So I couldn't. Right. Couldn't do anything. No. And this was uh, at the time, you, and your gun was bent in with, with, from the anti-aircraft yeah, shell. Yeah, it, it had sort of hit just, just. About, it, it had hit my turret at about there. Right. There, and the gun, this this gun here, was sort of still sticking out a little, and then right. <laughs> across the edge. Right. Wow. Made a big bang when it happened. Oh, bet. Going off right in front of your face. Yeah. I was very lucky, Timothy. I was very lucky. Well, yeah. You were lucky. Millionth of a second difference between. Yep. Hitting the up and hitting something else. In my notes I, I put when they did turn my turret around and get me out, Bassett, the top gunner who was uh, helping put the fire out, he said I wasn't looking forward to it. He said he said I thought I was sure you'd be dead. Yeah. Gosh. Right. Just a demonstration right. might have done, because I'm, we used to, it used to be lowered and raised hydraulically. Right. There, there were controls, uh, and when I yeah. wanted to, to get out, you sort of turned it up so that you were sitting upright like that, and then when you could do that, then you could feel down. It was, I think. No, no. up <laughs> and and release. The, the thing to open, open the, the door. back hatch. Mm. Gosh. That's this. <laughs> so, ball turret operator could not actually see the aircraft from his position. He was down there on his own. The lowered turret could lessen the speed of the aircraft up to six knots, therefore, the skipper would ask for the turret to be raised when the danger was passed. Most ball turret operators were volunteers and most all other air crew would not enter this position. <laughs> uh, I'm sure that's true. It's uh, So it's the only position in the plane we weren't allowed to wear a parachute, isn't it? Well, you couldn't wear a parachute. No. Timothy, when you bear that in mind and then you compare it all with what the air gunners went through who flew over Germany, yeah. Ah. Oh. Yeah, that was worse. So many, so many killed. I think 18,000. Gosh. Yeah.